Hello everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we have a grab bag to unbox from West Coast Varieties. I had paid him $400 and he sent me two grab bags or material for two grab bags. This is gonna be the second one. I unboxed the first one uh, in my time just before this, but in uh, in the release time will be a little bit further out, but there've been some really incredible coins that he's given to me um, or, or you know he's sold me, I guess, through the grab bag process. And we're going to open this one up. I thought originally I, I had purchased some coins with him. I thought that this was not part of the grab bags, but uh, it and and you know it was just some 1971 mint sets or something like that. Well, when we uh, peel it back, uh, it is not. I forget. I think I think we go here. Yeah, uh, it is not um, just mint sets in here. There there looks like there might be one, but there's a whole smattering of coins inside. So uh, we're gonna be opening this. It also looks like there's a mint set back here. I'm pretty sure that I know what is in there because it said on the outside, but I'll save that for a little bit later. But we've got this um, black set, uh, 1979 looks like a mint set. Then we've got a few over here and they've got little labels on them. So there's likely to be some errors inside. I'm gonna reveal those though as I open them up. And this seems to have a lot more coinage than the first batch that we went through. So this is uh, this is quite exciting and, and may well eclipse. Um, I haven't done the full valuation in terms of market valuations on the first grab bag yet. So um, there just seems to be a ton of material in here. It, it was kind of deceptive. I thought that there wasn't really a lot, but it seems like there's just a massive number. So this is gonna be awesome to work through. And there's just been so many varieties. I really like varieties. I talk about them on my channel. It's challenging to find them. And here, you know, here we go. We'll we'll start with the uh, this coin right here, which looks like a warnicle. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You know, maybe I can't tell. I think that that looks like. Let me know if if you're seeing that as well. Looks like a repunched mint mark on the P. Um, and that is certainly quite an interesting way to start us out here. Um, but we'll see what he says. Yep, um, 1942 P repunched mint mark. Uh, the South P over P, so um, definitely a really nice looking coin. Uh, a little bit of a hit right there on the back, but uh, it was it was quite apparent. You know, you can definitely see it protruding from the bottom, and it's good to have kind of tangible examples of errors in front of us. So uh, I always appreciate um, you know owning some, and it's been great of him to let us have some. This one says it's another repunchment mark. This one looks like to be in pretty good condition. S over S. Uh, 1947 um, and I actually said if the value is way over um, what you know the full four hundred dollars for across both the grab bags that I'll pay him more you know I'll write him an extra uh, check when I when I send him the check but uh, yeah we've got right there uh, another repunchment mark so great way to start out um, and I enjoy kind of collecting this stuff as well it'll be good down the line if I make some specific videos in them uh, on them, here's a 1946, another repunch mint mark. And these quarters are in nice condition, so uh, very cool to see these. Interesting how the tail feathers really are not that, um, you know, they, they fade into the background, not super defined. But this one, I, I feel like you can see it if you're told that they're, the repunching is there, but um, at the same time, you know, uh, it's not like super, super um, visible from the back. And I was just checking on something, making sure that my filming was on airplane mode so that I didn't get a bunch of feedback. This is shipwreck coinage. So authentic treasure silver coin from the wreckage of El Cazador, shipwrecked in 1784 and discovered in 1993. So this is actually pretty recent stuff here. Um, and I will have to do a little bit more research, but they look pretty similar. That one certainly looks like, you know, you can see the head. I'm going to zoom in and see what the lettering is. It looks like uh, Carolus three. So, um, I don't know if that's Charles or who Carolus is really referring to, but, um, certainly could have, I, I have no idea on the value, but again, I like historical things and this could not fit better into the historical things umbrella. So, um, very, very cool. Let's see actually a little bit more, um, background here. Uh, on January 1784, the Spanish brigantine of war sailed from Veracruz, Mexico to New Orleans ca carrying well, uh, 450,000 pesos of newly minted silver. Carlos, not Charles, Carlos, uh, who did not reign for super long, um, wanted to redeem it, This uh, the paper currency, and then, yeah, they could use the coins instead, but it sank. So the, wow, that's incredible. Without these silver coins, 
To solidify the Spanish monetary in colonial North America, the king of Spain was forced to sell or trade Louisiana. So it went to Napoleon, and then we got that in the States. So that was um, a phenomenal, uh, <laughs> a phenomenal uh, maybe event, uh, though it's, it's quite sad, but it has certainly helped um, America have a much larger uh, amount of territory for anybody living you know, west of the Mississippi or the Louisiana Purchase. I actually should know exactly geography that's covering. Here, I saw this. It says 1956 DDR. Wow. Um, it says he says it's minor. Um, and one thing I'm going to try to do is pull this up on the. Uh, maybe you can see it a little bit with a split serif in the S. I'm not totally sure. Um, and maybe a little thickness in the E pluribus unum. But I'll pull this up on my my uh, USB um, magnifier. This one is a D over D. Repunched mint mark. Let's see right there. Um, some of these are pretty challenging to see, and I think I can see kind of a split in the top, kind of in the northwest uh, corner of that D mint mark, a little bit of a split serif, but this stuff you have to look closely, you have to be an expert, and that's that's kind of why I try to do a lot of the videos I do so that you can look for this um, and, and know and kind of reference. Here's a type 1 struck through error, wow. So um, let's see if we can figure out is the, well, yeah, right there. Um, let's just confirm. Yeah, it's not on the back. Check that out. Um, certainly a very interesting error right there. Um, as you can see, the in the, gl the glare is kind of behind it, but right there, uh, the material has been struck through. What it was struck through, not sure, but when they were striking, there was some cool struck through errors. You know, here's an example from the last grab bag um, that, or the other part where it's hit, uh, Kendi's head is kind of has something struck through. When the die pressed down, it struck through something. Um, so. Uh, very very interesting error and it's it's I really like proof errors as well it's often tough to see ooh and this is exciting 1964 repunched date um, I actually don't know I can't tell if it's like a little bit right there to the left um, I should know this error better but like I haven't done a full uh, study through the Indian head since a lot of the older stuff um, I, I'm gonna do videos on those in the future hopefully but haven't right now. Here is a great coin to own, the Wide Rim FS301. Uh, the Susan B. Anthony, this is really the, the main error to look for in the Susan B. Anthony coin. Um, and it, it uh, you know, the rim is super tucked in close with the one and the nine is really how to look for it. Uh, value is not super high, but um, certainly a cool error that I always would look for when I was a super new coin collector, and I still enjoy looking for it. Here's a minor double die. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that means. There's tons. Uh, it's probably some sort of small separation in, in God We Trust. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong on that one. And then over here, we've got a double die reverse on the 1963. Uh, the dimes are cool because there's a lot of neat errors that uh, are not very expensive. Oh, yeah, and you can see it right there. Separation in the E. It's like a uh, you know northwest southeast spread um, the dime the dime errors are often pretty inexpensive to collect especially yeah if they're not super great condition here we've got an inverted mint mark um, so I didn't know that that was something to look for 1928s standing liberty uh, it should have I guess looked like that I assume but instead um, and that actually I would not have been able to recognize this error but very fun um, and, and it shows, you know, this stuff has been going on for a long time. On the older stuff, a lot of it seems to be repunched dates. Um, this is the, oh, the, the, whoa, that is a cool error right there. 1856 upright five clip planchet. So cool. And you can see, I mean, this is one of the main things I always reiterate because something I remember. And I, so I want to share the fact when there's a real clip planchet, often you can see a little bit of weakness across and you can see some of the weakness across this uh, this planchet over here. But normally you see the clip planchet stuff on like a new penny. Here we're getting it on something much older. So that, that certainly is a valuable error. And I feel like we're doing way ahead and I'm definitely going to write uh, a check for a little bit for much more than what I paid for this. Here we've got 1955, oh, Bugs Bunny. So, yep, you can see right there. It's almost like his kind of lip. It's like he has a mustache. Uh, or he has the Bugs Bunny kind of buck tooth. That was one of my favorite cartoons growing up. Uh, fun to remember. But yeah, the uh, Bugs Bunny classic error. And over here, 1970D. Is this a DDR? I forget what it is. Yeah. Um, 
1970D, that's what you want to look for, um, though I'm forgetting exactly where on the lettering um, I would look for it, but I did remember that it was something on the reverse. I'm not seeing it right away, and uh, yeah, just try to be open with you guys. If I don't know it, I'm not going to pretend to show you. Hopefully, you know, I can circle back and show you that in just a moment. Um, and it, we are certainly not right at the end of this by any means, so we've got a double die reverse here. It looks like a 1963 Franklin, um, and so let's see uh, if it's apparent, because it should be. I always feel bad when I can't immediately point out the error. Like, I can't tell if that is a little bit of doubling in the top of the A, or if we're looking for it in, I feel like, I think you can see it on the outside of the M there in the Unum, in that lettering. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit closer. Yeah, I think that that's where it has to be, because unless my eyes are deceiving me or something, because it doesn't look as obvious right there. Uh, sometimes some of the doubling can also be found in the feathers in that eagle. I'll update you later, but um, it seems like we're getting quite a haul here. So, um, very thankful. I was going to see, this is an obverse die clash, and a, I don't know what Snow 9 is, but uh, let's see where the die clash is. Um, so there's the reverse, and then the 1857 Flying Eagle scent. Maybe it looks like right there along the side in the America. Um, wow, that's neat. Uh, yeah, the, the errors on older coins are always really fun to take a look at. Um, so let's see what is over here. Um, 1952, let's see, 1943D, double die obverse. Some of these quarters are extremely apparent when you've got them in wow. Look at that, uh, right there in the, in, it looks like, well, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like that three looks very, very doubled, um, you know, looking around at the rest of the coin. It's so worn that it's a little bit tougher to tell. I can't tell if that's also doubling over in the ribbon, and I, I don't think the bottom of the nine, I feel like there's doubling in the three, and maybe I'm, maybe I'm all wrong, and maybe I'm, you know, messing up, but I just tell it to you as I see it, and the 1952S repunched mint mark, like, I can't tell if that's coming out the side there or what's going on with this one. So I don't want to pretend that I'm, yeah, excited about these coins, though, because if there's one guy to get an error from when you can feel that you're being treated well and that it actually is the error, it would be Spencer. So here are some Type B reverses, and they can be valuable um, when they're in the in better condition, but you, you're looking at how the E and the S interact with each other and I should do a full video solely dedicated to this uh, topic but these the type B I believe was supposed to be used for proofs and it made its way onto some of the non-proof the business strike coins so um, yeah we got the ES um, just slightly separated and uh, the prices can get really expensive when it's in really good condition otherwise it's not going to be um, a huge value but I'm sure that these are worth a lot more than you know a regular quarter 1960 in, in good condition here we've got an inverted mint mark barber and that's that's cool and you can tell you know with the uh let me let me find where i put it with the 1928 i couldn't tell that this was immediately inverted i mean maybe i could believe it because it's getting larger but here it looks totally out of place look tiny little s at the top uh really it's lopsided and this is again in, in pretty decent condition so that's certainly a valuable coin. And then over here, um, we've got the 1922 feathers, huh? Um, let me let me bring another buffalo so that we can compare. Um, is there a missing feather kind of at the bottom? Yeah, um, I think that is exactly, you know, right there at the bottom of his neck. I haven't seen a two feather error before, but that's what I would assume. And I, I don't think that it would really be anything else. So 1920 buffalo nickel mint air that's that's cool and i wonder what caused it if it was maybe just like over polishing of the dye um we'll have to look into that now we've got some cool stuff because it's in the set so we'll start out over here we've got a 10 cent double die 1968 that could actually have quite a bit of value let me uh let me take a close look um what happens when i talk about all this stuff is that it's not always you know, I, I sometimes forget exactly where to look for it, the doubling, but it's probably either going to be, is it in the JS? Um, or maybe it kind of looks like the eight is doubled a little bit of north, like northeast, southwest spread. Um, 
maybe it's in the B or, you know, I, I can't fully, you know, it looks like there's a little bit of separation lines along the T, but really thin stuff. And there, it's often where you can't see it in the camera. And then you pull it up in, you know, like one of these 10 X magnifiers. Let's see if this will work. Um, Okay, this is not really going how I, it's not being super helpful, um, but it's probably not the right technology fully for it, but that is exciting, and I love it when it's in the mint packaging. Um, let's see what else. Right here, we've got a 1971D double die obverse. This is so cool, man. I'm a huge fan of purchasing these grab bags, um, and it looks to me might be some serifs in the T um, that are split. It's probably going to be in the In God We Trust again, but um, yeah, again, I'll be... Th these types of videos I edit pretty carefully um, to try to show off the errors. This is exciting. Type 2, um, you know, kind of like a filled... Ooh, and these, these coins look really good. Um, the S, you know, it's it's most valuable on the dollar coin, but there's two different versions of the S mint mark. Um, and I believe, yeah, the type two, I mean, he would have put it in here if it was a better one. Um, I've got videos on it, but you can tell based off of how the serifs are angled. And for a while, I think that this was a more rare or more collected and expensive variety than it currently is, but this is the full set. And this is certainly a special coin right here. But as you can tell, I mean, it can be a little bit challenging to diagnose just because it's not like, you know, I'm zooming in three times right now and you can't super clearly see the S um, as I'm trying to describe it, but awesome, awesome little mint error. And then the last one I'd seen, but I'm going to confirm it with you guys. And I think the Denver is, yep, the red. Uh, so it's going to be right over here, 1974D, double die obverse. This is a pretty clear one. Um, you can see right there in the R, uh, you know, even on camera, it clearly appears top of the W. This is a very doubled coin, bottom of the S, bottom of the U. Very clear doubling. So really cool to have this in hand. And I mean, man, knocking it out of the park. I know already that I'm going to be sending more money than, um, you know, 400 bucks for the past two grab bags if you followed along on the other one as well. But let me zoom out here a little bit. So much historical, um, you know, I, I find it historically significant at least. I think just because of the uniqueness, one of my favorites is this error. Uh, I remember, here, let me zoom in a little bit so, yeah, you can see it. Um, you know, Gary from World Class Coins once sent me a, and I, I sent it back to him, but like a really off-center, I want to say it was 1793 cent. It, unbelievable. Anything that's old and an error really cool and then a lot of these earlier dimes are really challenging to come by uh, in terms of like a 1968 double diaverse you know 71d i think is also challenging and then like you got the just kind of neat historical el cazador that i didn't realize that this you know the monetary systems are really interesting to look into if you ever want to do some uh, historical you know reading in terms of how the monetary systems it, it was tough back then i mean it wasn't easy to trade there was huge coin shortages, huge short change shortages. Everybody was making money on, you know, local paper currency and buying and selling bonds. People were making money. They were also getting wiped out. Often the people with more knowledge would do quite well, but it was just a different time. I mean, that's the history that shows that. So what a cool display of coins. Thank you so much. And we'll see if we do any more grab bags together in the future. Thanks for watching the video. I encourage you to like, comment, and definitely subscribe to the channel and connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I also have a website, treasuretownyt.com, where you should go so that you can learn more about coins as well as what's happening on the channel and possibly find a place to sell your coins and collectibles. I also want to talk about some of my other projects like coinmeltprice.com, which shows precious metals prices as well as the melt values of coins containing those precious metals, both US and world. I also have coinsmetalscards.com, which will develop into a full marketplace, as well as a news source for coins, metals, cards, as the name might suggest. And then treasuretowncoins.com, which long term will be my coin dealing entity separate from the channel. And lastly, whatsthegrade.com, which will be a stickering service for already certified collectibles where you can get a approval or verification 
of the grade on the holder. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I look forward to seeing you on some of my other videos.